uh, hey. bearing with us here. No, are you um, kidding? I was loving listening to them sing. I it know, awesome. it was amazing. You guys are great singers. Uh, so, anyway. We're going to release that on our first album, I think, don't you? We could, yeah. Absolutely. The best of Character Crusade. Or the worst of Character <laughs> or the worst. Crusade. Yeah. Um, That's I can't not wait very for nice. Christmas special. Oh, man. I suppose we should have told them that we were recording them singing. We should have. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. We hacked into all of your microphones, and we've been recording all this. <laughs> That's why we were gone for a few minutes. I wasn't making a character. We were hacking your microphones. So. Yeah. If you don't believe them, see a sheet. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. No, not that yeah. one. Well, I'm fully all the IP addresses are written on there. Uh, okay, so we are preparing to start the adventure proper. Uh, while we were on our break, we kind of solidified what it was we were going to try and accomplish here upon our return, and then also um, kind of got Matt squared away here with, with his character. I think um, to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to go around the table and we're going to do a brief introduction of each character so you're familiar with the characters that are in play in the story here. And then we're going to commence with uh, the campaign. So thank you all for your patience. Perfect. I ask about that. All right. Excellent. Yeah, that actually would probably be a decent one since it's not as high gloss as the yeah. actual. Yep. Nice. Okay, so uh, I can start. We can go around this way. All right, go ahead. Okay. Uh, my name is Stu. I am playing a character. Hi, Stu. Hi, Hi. Stu. <laughs> I, my character's name is Dunstan Dornail Lawford. Dornail obviously being a moniker, and the genesis of that moniker I'm sure will come out during gameplay. But uh, he is a half-elf. And he is kind of a custom class from the uh, Freeport game setting called the Freebooter. Uh, something kind of between a rogue and a fighter. Uh, so that's probably, I, I guess, we'll find out more about Dunstan as we play. So, Joe? All right. My character's name is Jinjin. Uh, he bears the moniker of Arm Thumper. I don't know which camera to look at. <laughs> yes. Always this All one. Always that, that one. one. Okay. Yeah. Um, look at this one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that one. <laughs> Look at that. Look Camera at that one. one. Camera that two. So nice. Camera one. Yeah. Camera two. They're, they're not numbered. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Jin Jin is another Freeport specific race. He is an island troll. Um, what else should What's we? What's his class? Jin Jin is a ranger, and I'm going to uh, be going with the archetype of urban ranger. Okay. So, he is going to be more skilled in the urban setting. Okay. Um, and Tom, what was the what was the URL of the Pathfinder resource site again? I have it right here. No. So, if anyone gets curious and wants to know a little bit more about the mechanics, if you head to D20, PF for Pathfinder, SRD. So, D20, PF, SRD, dot com. Yep. That is like the central clearinghouse for what's the equivalent of probably a few thousand pages of game material. And, and I found the search functions really it's good. It's really so, good. It is uh, just. You should really, be able to really find good. out. Yep. Uh, yep. Find what you're looking for pretty quickly. Yep. Yep. It's a it's an excellent spot to go. So if you uh, if you get curious out there in in uh, Interpipes land and want to follow <laughs> along a little bit yeah. about how the. The mechanics of the game go. Feel free to check that out and and uh, just correct me as we go. So I think I'm opening myself up to some possible flaming as we get uh, some of the mechanics wrong. But it's a learning process. We're here to have fun. So That's feel free to check it true. out. If you want to pick on somebody? Pick on me. So you heard that. Pick on that. Correct. Uh, yep. Triple W. You oh yeah, you got to have the dubs. Put in the dubs. All right, we got it. We got it. <laughs> I was like to set them up with and without yeah. the dubs because you can shorten your URLs without needing a URL shortener. All right, fellas, thank you. Proceed. All right. All right. So, Jinjin the Island Troll, Urban Ranger. The Island That's me. Troll. Island Troll. Excellent. Steel drums. No. The Rasta Troll. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you said it hey, was it might troll. work, actually. That actually <laughs> might work. Yeah, I'm on. Come on. Urban Ranger, I'm on. Come in here for a beating, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got it. I was just wondering, man. All, All right. right. 
<laughs> All right, Matt. That's an odd font to pick, wasn't it? That's okay. It's not a big deal. All right, so uh, my character, newly birthed in the last uh, few minutes, actually, is Vril Wisebloom. Uh, if I can remember this correctly all the way through. Uh, Vril is a halfling, uh, thief, vigilante. Nice. Uh, oh. So the apparently the, the spread angry of little my uh, character points is interesting. Very interesting. Uh, should have cool. some uh, interesting... Uh, effects on, awesome. the, on the crew here, uh, as is per the norm, intelligence from me is very low. So, <laughs> it's right up my alley. Well, so. there's, there's definitely a certain amount of irony with the largest man in this playing room the tiniest playing the tiniest smallest. character. I so, love irony. <laughs> I want to take that all the way through. So, uh, I would like to express extreme thanks to this guy right here. Uh, Tom, for walking me through in very, very short order all these things that I'm now going to have to figure out how to ingrain in my head. There'll be a quiz later. He's yeah. hoping that flattery yeah. is going to help us. Right. No, it's totally not. I, I think he's figuring out how do you take the smoke. He was already talking to you about how do you use me as an arrow. Yeah. I mean, come on. Projectile weapon. He is a halfling, and you are an island troll. So, uh, right? He it may come, it may come up. And yeah. by the way, I'm sure that if you pick me up and do that, the sound of my name will be just perfect. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so be the meat shield. <laughs> the meat shield. Yeah. So that's uh, that's who I am, and uh, alignments are going to be kind of interesting as well. Yes. Yes. Oh, and and what is yours? Oh, chaotic neutral. And Ooh. what is Dunstan? Dunstan is also chaotic neutral. Excellent. Ooh. Yeah. Three. Wow. Chaotic, chaotic neutral. neutral. Perfect. Well, this is going to be a chaotic adventure. Who, yeah, it's going to be a chaotic <laughs> adventure. You guys are just oh, all in it for yourselves. I, I had sounds... considered chaotic good, but then upon a little more research into the island troll, it didn't make a lot of sense because they just don't think that far ahead. <laughs> I, oh, really? I have a feeling that this crew is going to have to go If they cared down about anyone, other... You, they, they might be good no. or evil, but they just don't care enough. All right. Well, we'll have to go All down right. to the docks so, and get some matching yep. tattoos, right? <laughs> Chaotic neutral. <laughs> <laughs> and then for those of you that aren't familiar with what an alignment is, you know, characters are, you know, they can be good, they can be evil, they can respect law and order, they can, uh, you know, be totally okay with just the chaotic nature of, of random chance in life. And so... Mm -hmm. A character's Where's alignment an is an indicator of, of their value mm -hmm. system and, and what they feel is important and, and kind of what, what fuels them and what motivates them. Yeah. So, correct. so apparently we're all willing to do anything to anyone, anywhere, at any time. For any reason. For any, for any reason. reason. Yes. yes. But yes. primarily for our own benefit, I think. Or Possibly. if it's just plain funny. If it's yeah. just plain fun. <laughs> I like that. Like shooting a halfling through like a wall. Because that yes. just might be fun. Hey, wow, that okay. guy's head makes a really neat yeah. noise against the wall. So that brings us to Tom's oh, character. Oh. Guess who's here? Who? So <gasps> our... Our sandwiches. Yes. Okay, bye everyone. <laughs> Stu is going to go <laughs> eat our right. supper. Yeah. Uh, yeah, very interesting. So Tom... So then, yeah, so as the, the game master, uh, it's my job to play every other character that these people will come across. So uh, it is a lot of work, and it's a lot of fun, and... Uh, so at various times I could be um, I could be the sea lord I could be a <coughs> captain I could be a uh, merchant rogue in the alley yes and yes. the awesome thing is he's gonna voice every single one of them oh my god you guys are getting for <laughs> nails on the chalk <laughs> they're all um, gonna sound like no. schmoo aren't yeah they? exactly <laughs> so, so I play a little bit of everything but uh, just to know we have um, uh, there is one character who will be. A non-player character, so it's referred to as an NPC, uh, but we'll continue to uh, hang so out with the party. Recurring and, character. Yep, exactly, exactly. We'll become kind of our, our fourth member here. So. And who is that? So that, well, you know what? You'll find out. You will find Ooh. out in, soon, in you know, short order. I think that makes it even fair. more fun. It, it does make it, just it even more fun. Fair. Yes. Well, we get yeah. to... Get some introductions out of the way here, but you know, there's always got to be some mystery. Yes, Ooh. yes. We're starting off, and I'm looking at this huge map here, we right? Snow. And I think that there's just some we really snow. fantastic areas uh, across all of Freeport. They're going to be very fun to find ourselves. There in. is a lot. So Freeport, from uh, Freeport. what little bit we can share right now, Freeport is a an ancient city. I don't know how much you shared. Um, 
just kind of some highlights on some of the background and and I guess we focus primarily on on the districts. Perfect. Good. Good. Yep. Yep. So so Freeport, real real high level. Freeport is a is a city of well, mystery so, intrigue, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Does well, that help? Am I helping? Game, would it be Am I helping at all? Well, it's all the rules are laid out. We know exactly what's going to happen. Not so fun a game. It's my job to be not helpful. <laughs> so <if> Ask Stu. <laughs> Freeport like is a place days. where uh, there is a as well established noble class. Okay. And a high society. There was a question about uh, governance. Yes. And how what it, how it's structured. Yes. Yeah, so that's actually a really good question. And, and there is there is a government. Um, the head of the government in Freeport is known as the Sea Lord. Okay. okay? Yeah. So the Sea Lord serves as the as the highest ranking power. In Would the that be city. equivalent to like a governor? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Okay. So uh, the first Sea Lord. Way back when, when Freeport was just a small port town, uh, was a character named Drac. Correct. Which one of the districts is named after? Yes, yes. Drac's end. And yes. so uh, Drac, throughout his years, uh, had developed this into are this asking. thriving port yeah. town. And we're going to learn a little bit more about how Freeport came to be and how the, who this character Drac is and, and how the legacy that he left still continues to affect the city as it is right now. So cool. there is the, uh, and then right below the Sea Lord is there is a, uh, a council, a city council, so to say. Okay. Um, of roughly what you know about that is about 10 to 15 uh, nobles. Nobles. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> Where the hell? Of course. They're mechanics, actually. <laughs> yep, yeah, they're mechanics and, and HVAC repair guys. <laughs> nice. So Very representative yes, of the mass yes, population. Yes, right, right. Um, <laughs> so these nobles then form a bit of a, a, a ruling council, so to say, okay. um, to manage the affairs of the city. Mm -hmm. But don't get it wrong that this is a place rife with corruption, mm -hmm. where uh, greasing the wheels to get what you want is just the <clears throat> order of the day. Uh, getting thrown in jail for tax evasion uh, is just as common as getting thrown in for, oh, I don't know, poisoning your <laughs> neighbor. So I they, think... Things this very loose this little bit here board. seems to sum it up pretty well um, in regards to that. The city hums with backroom bargains, the steady stream of black market goods slipping beneath the nose of the corrupt harbor master. Assassins stalk the knights, cultists perform dreadful ceremonies, and pirates walk the docks looking to spend the spend the bloodstained coins they pried from dead fingers. Nice. Well put. So I think that... Uh, Sums up kind of what well, just put. Yes, thank you. Mystery, <clears throat> intrigue, and blood-stained coins All from right. corpses. What a great combo. We're gonna roll a hunger check uh, a little bit later on to figure out when <laughs> we're gonna crack into that. But uh, <laughs> now is not the time. So, Stu, we we're just giving a little bit of background here, and uh, we are we are ready. We're ready to go. Wonderful. So, Let's do it. so the uh, the scene starts with. Dunstan and Jinjin sitting at the docks, and there is a captain of a ship called the Water Witch, who is in the process of forcibly ejecting the two of you from the ship. And he says, I never want to see you here again. You two are off. You and you. If I ever see you around here again, you're going right to the bottom of the bay. What did I do? <laughs> you know what you did. <sighs> Fine. If you ever, ever, ever string a person up like that again, by I tell you. Uh, can I at least get my share? <laughs> Your share? <laughs> yeah. Your share? Yeah, I, I, I worked for it, obviously. If you're lucky I'm going to leave you with the clothes on your back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, well, how about my gear down in my bunk? I'll go get my gear. It's mine now. Uh, all, right. <laughs> all right. And you, Jin Jin. Uh, huh? I'm disappointed in you. I thought you were different. I did my job well. I did nothing well on this joke voyage. <laughs> not true. I'm going to do you one favor. What's that? I'm not telling anyone else the level at your incompetence. Because you do have a good heart. I know this. I know this. <laughs> but you'll be lucky to find work ever again. Oh. 
see. Now get out of my sight. See if he'll give you your share. Huh? Forget it. <laughs> Forget it. You should ask for a share. He's Can something. I have Jinjin's share? Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> so All right, you, you so can tell. You, you can now tell that by the by the reaction, you're getting nowhere with this guy. He is pissed. All right. Well, Captain hates our guts. So, good job. All right. Off we go. All so right. that we get so summarily we, dumped on the docks, then, right? So you're you're dumped on the docks. It's you and Jinjin, and you literally have the clothes on your back. You have nothing. Else. Does Captain have a name? Uh, it's Captain Scully. Scully. Of the Water Witch. Okay. Yep. Captain Scully. Which you will probably never ever see again. And if you do, <laughs> you'll be, uh, yeah, you'll be, you'll be lucky you walk away without a bruise or two. I'm pretty sure that you will always remember getting Scully, though. That's yeah. right. You did just get the Scully. <laughs> Damn it. Jerry. So you're sitting there on the dock, and you really have, you know, nowhere to nowhere to go. And and you know, Dunstan, you're no stranger to Freeport. No, you've, uh, you've it's been a while. Uh, it has been a while. Mm-hmm. It has been a while. You spent most of your time out at sea, but you do know, you know, of a place. You, know, you spent most of your childhood, from what I know about you, is that you mm-hmm. spent most of your child actually raised by prostitute, right? I mean, <laughs> Pretty you're, much, you're, yeah. You know, you're, so can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, Dunstan, uh, Dunstan's background is, uh, he, he's, he's the bastard son of a, of a prostitute who uh, is a human prostitute. Obviously, he's a half-elf, so he knows that uh, his, his father was an elf, but he doesn't know anything about his father. He doesn't know anything about his father's origin. So he was actually raised in the brothel, and he had <clears throat> probably 20 or 30 mothers over the course of uh, his, his youth. And then uh, he received some limited training in, in swordsmanship and, and different skills from uh, Johns, who frequented the place, who kind of stepped in and taught him a few things. But uh, for the most part, he's he spent most of, of his youth and his teenage years trying to find a way to get out of mm. of the brothel and experience the world and stuff. Uh, not that you know he wasn't loved; he was he was loved. He had a pretty good upbringing considering the environment. But he yeah. proceeded from there out to hit the high seas, and uh, from there he he just kind of bounced from ship to ship, uh, usually because he had been fired and moved on to the next ship. He's got something of a reputation as uh, a being a good climber and good with ropes, but very bad at following instruction. So, yeah. Nice. Clearly. Yeah, exactly. Captain <laughs> Scully would wholeheartedly agree. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. yeah, that's kind of where... I've got a slight problem with authority. Yeah. Kind of where Dunstan is at right now. Okay, well, <clears throat> Jinjin, I, uh, you know, as you're standing there, you're sitting there, and you're, you're pissed. I mean, this clown here... Pretty much just got you fired off the ship, Ooh. and uh, I mean, you guys have known each other for the time of the ship, and you like you know you like him, but I mean, you're you're pretty pissed, and you're ready just to walk away. All this right. guy has brought nothing but misery in your life for the past okay. <laughs> week. Well, I'm glad I, think, I wasn't on the ship. <laughs> I think I need to consult Jerry about this. Jerry, who's Jerry? Jerry, <clears throat> Jerry is a an important little totem that Jin Jin carries around. It's a small rock uh, that happens to have markings that look like a face. And he carries around Jin, or he carries around Jerry in this little pouch. <clears throat> and uh, when there are important decisions to be made, he consults Jerry's opinion. Um, Jerry's very important <clears throat> to Jin Jin. Uh, he feeds Jerry, he waters Jerry. <laughs> Uh, he talks to Jerry. He will kill you if you threaten Jerry. Wow. Mm. <laughs> so would this be like almost like a little like a stuffed animal that he carries? Uh, no, it's actually just a stone. Okay. It's a rock. Well, right, right. Yeah. But it's kind of like a well, yeah, like kind of. It would, yeah. It's totem. It's, yeah, it's, it's a little it's very uh, sweet. keepsake. It's very cute. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's it's his yeah. little keepsake. Yeah. Little, no, I, wow. there isn't a lot known why Jerry mm-hmm. exists. Right. Um, but you do listen to Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. Is, oh, is yeah. Jerry I, right I, most of the time? I talk to Jerry. All, Jerry's always right. Jerry's always Ooh. right. Okay. He's like the that 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 stabilizing ground. You <laughs> the, know? The, the grounding yeah. force in your yes, life. Yes. Okay. And what's your uh, <laughs> literally? You, what's your uh, what's your wisdom score? <clears throat> uh, my wisdom score is twelve. Twelve. All right. 
surprisingly. Twelve. All right, so... Uh, than mine. <laughs> Jin Jin, you, you kind of hear this, like, whisper coming from your neck. It's this voice, and it's, it's, it's Jerry. All right. <laughs> and uh, Jerry is telling you just to, like, you just need to ditch this Dunstan guy, like, ASAP. <laughs> All right. So what do you think? Well, yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah. Okay. Come on, let's yeah. go. I know a perfect place. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, going. Come on, I know. Yeah. Come on. It's it's this. It's a brothel, but it's come okay. On. It's okay. I got a I'm friend gonna there. Just going to start His walking as he's Basher. talking. Hey, wait a minute. You're not listening to me. His name is Basher. Okay. He and I used to hang out. He he's been around town a lot longer than I have. And, and he'll know where we can go. Stop. Would Long you stop? Long strides. <laughs> I'm having trouble keeping up. Would you wait? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Huh? I know I'm things. Saying, I know we, things. What do you know? Have you? I have know you how to work a whip. Yeah, I know, I know that. I've seen that. I've seen that. Jerry, Jerry, actually, he's... Um, Jerry's, Jerry's okay right now <laughs> with... With you going with Dunstan. All right. Oh, yeah. Why don't you roll a uh, Why don't you roll a charisma check? I'll stop. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. What's your charisma score? Uh, my charisma score is a fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. Good. And what uh, do you have any bonuses with that? Uh, just the ability modifier plus two. So you get a plus two with that. Okay. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and roll that? A fourteen. I rolled. Plus with your two. It's no, 12, 12 plus, plus the two. So you got a sixteen. Well. No, right. I got a, I got a fourteen. Plus. You got a fourteen total. Fourteen okay. total. Yep. Well. Okay, well, guess what? So your charisma is able to win over Jinjin over here. Reason. Yep. Wow. Some, so, some kind of reason. So you guys are going to okay. start... Yep, you guys are going to start walking down the docks, and, and fortunately, uh, it's not far until you, you, you come to a place where you know your basher, your friend basher, has been known to frequent from time to time. So... Okay. Um, you know, you're going to come in and... and uh, okay. You open the door, and you hear this, Oh, Dunstan! Dunstan, my dear, how are you? We haven't seen you for ages. Where have you been? Uh, I've been sailing the high seas, oh, searching that's... for adventure and wealth. Oh, that sounds so important. Acquired. Yes. 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 Wow, wow. And as you is, can see, who, I have no wealth. Who is his no friend? You... <laughs> um, Broad, he, he's <laughs> huge. <laughs> yeah. um, and you, smelly. And smelly, okay. I was going to ask if you had done oh, that. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, my big friend here, uh, his name is Jin Jin. We got to know each other on the Water Witch, where we had many adventures. He was the bosun there. Quite impressive, I would say. Oh, well, well, welcome, Jin Jin. Um, and she kind of looks around like, I don't know if I can find a place for you to sit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, can, I, can I get you guys something to eat? That yes. would be great. Okay. okay. Yes, <clears throat> I'll have anything with a fork, please. Okay. All right. Well, good. Good. Please, please, just just come in and, and have a seat and just re- relax here. Oh, this is great. I will okay, grab so any well, chair. So, well, there Closest it is. Is. <laughs> nearby. <laughs> you're gonna come in on your errand. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so you guys here while you're just relaxing in the corner and and Martha is off uh, fixing oh, you up. Some, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some shells and cheese. Break. <laughs> some shells and cheese. Breaking off. Yeah, I think it's stuff. probably a good time to maybe give some physical stats on. Please Jin do. Jin. Yes. So I mean, why was why was Martha so? Jin Jin is seven foot four and three hundred and seventy pounds. Okay, wow. I'm guessing your skin color is somewhat off. It's a purple. It's yep. a purplish in hue. Yep. 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 Okay. That's. Is that because of the beautiful, soul, brilliant, pale blue eyes, though? <laughs> oh, that's so nice. <laughs> All right. If you can oh get that boy. close. <laughs> if you can get that close. I like that. Because Jin Jin does smell. Oh, yeah. Bad. He, he smells bad. Really bad. But I've bad. become accustomed to it. <laughs> yes. It mm. smells much like the docks. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that could be. The fishmonger's market. I was going to say. <laughs> Fish carcasses. But he doesn't seem to notice, so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so Jin Jin is a very large individual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the reason why Dunstan has sort of, in a way, attached himself to Jinjin uh, for safety. <laughs> and also because Jinjin was essentially someone that he was sort of informally working for on the ship. Um, as Bosun, Jinjin was in part in charge of things like rope and tackle and stuff. And Dunstan is something of a rope monkey. So uh, 
they, I think, had occasion to work with each other quite a bit. So that's kind of where the relationship begins. Jin -jin, it's mostly a professional. Jinjin didn't really prefer many of the boltons or the bosons duties except for discipline. Oh, so was his um, <laughs> having a rope monkey nearby is is very handy right. for those particular duties. I can do the lashings and but the splicing. He was yeah. very and I will do the lashings. <laughs> you do the lashings. <laughs> the okay, lashings. You do the lashings. More lashing. I'll do this. But uh, he what he did migrate Jinjin Jin did towards the disciplinary role of that mm -hmm. particular now granted if you're aware of what a boats and bosun does it's actually a very complicated and involved job um, why the captain decided that an island troll would be good at it I don't think he'll probably make that mistake well, in the future well you know Captain Scully wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer <clears throat> so to say so it might have been availability um, it might have been a little too much rum perhaps <laughs> but any port is Jinjin's Jin stint as a bosun lasted about one week. You guys were not long for the Water Witch, were you? No, no. and it's mostly mm. his fault. Mm. What do you mean? It wasn't it's all always fault. your fault. It wasn't okay. all. Right. Well, my fault, I made it to the ribs on someone, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, as you guys are settling in and, and uh, little Martha is Arguing. making some shells and cheese <laughs> and you're both kind of sullenly sitting there, you do notice in the front door that you've recently come through small halfling come in and he comes in and he's kind of looking around the room and and it's you know it's light outside and it's dark in there so his eyes are adjusting and he's kind of kind of over there and he's he's clearly he's looking for somebody so make my way through it's pretty obvious i was sent on an errand and that uh it would be pretty easy to find the two of you i'm uh surprised that i wasn't given a better description perhaps of the fact that all I needed to do was to keep looking up and follow my nose. So what's your, um, <laughs> what is your wisdom score there? Uh, wisdom is 11. You're at an 11. At an 11. Okay, so we don't have you a perception skill check yet. That will, that will come, so we're just going to roll that off. Well, clearly. You notice in the corner <laughs> that sitting <laughs> over there are these two people that Martin Hawks <clears throat> your current employer has asked you to find. Now, you've been working for Martin for a few weeks now, and he's a, uh, he's an, he's, he's the head, he has his own auction house mm -hmm. in the Eastern District. And, and you know Martin to be a very scrupulous guy. Um, you know, your, your chaotic nature kind of, you, you mesh well with someone who's able to act in the moment and usually with people's best interest at heart. And, and you've never seen him cheat anybody. You've never seen him steal which is actually sticks out quite a lot in Freeport. Because <laughs> What's it's, wrong with you? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you actually have a, you have a lot of respect for Martin. And, um, you know, as you're a, a, a budding vigilante, uh, the parallel would be Spider-Man when he has his bad suit on, the bad Spider-Man <laughs> suit, Spider the amateur, <laughs> yeah, the amateur <laughs> Spider-Man. Okay. Uh, you, you need to do something to eat, Right, so uh, he fortunately, um, you know, you're kind of good at sneaking around. You're you're, you're pretty good at slinking through the shadows. And and Martin, well, he is an upstanding man, is not above perhaps someone who might be able to, you know, pick a lock from time to time, or you know, trail someone who's got some inventory that he's interested in bringing into his auction house. Yeah. So you know, you've never actually committed any crimes in in his um, at his request, but. From time to time, he's needed your services. Absolutely. Right? So uh, he came to you recently, and, uh, you know, he's got a very good network. And the Eastern District also tends to be uh, a place where uh, ship's captains tend to tend to raise their families and whatnot. And so there's kind of this, this neighborhood communication system. And uh, he's been made aware that uh, some friends of his brother Basher um, you know, would be coming into port sometime soon. And uh, that Basher particularly frequented this establishment. And he's asked you um, to go and find these two people, uh, very specific in his description, this mm -hmm. kind of gangly, you know, scrawny looking um, wannabe sailor guy, and then a big island troll. <laughs> All right, so you really can't miss uh, either one of these guys, and you notice them sitting there in the corner. And your mission is to convince them to come with you 
to a small coffee shop uh, in the Eastern District known as uh, Cafe Ilkin. Cafe Ilkin. Yes. You don't know why, but he's asked you to do that, and it's just just part of your part of your duties for Martin. All right. Has Martha returned with any food yet? Martha is still banging away, making some shells and cheese in the back. I'm thinking that perhaps because uh, running on errands in order to bring some food onto my own table, it might be nice to get some while I'm here. Well, so cockles yeah. and mussels. Help myself along the way. Cockles and mussels from and Martha. Alive, alive, oh. Not even going there. <laughs> 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 well, we are in the right place for that. Kind That's of thing, right. Aren't we? So, <laughs> don't let me be distracted from the job, though. <laughs> oh, the good thing is, is is that hungry people often will listen to people as they're waiting for their food so I can sidle up and check with these they newcomers here nothing in town. Else to do. They yep. don't have anything to do. <laughs> yep, nothing else. No menus to look at. Bicker back and forth on whose fault it is. <laughs> it's clear that that's happening. <laughs> Not even entirely sure why the big guy just keeps talking to himself either, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so does You could have... ask I could. I was Does this hat <laughs> look like he has any money? You know, he's got. Uh, I wouldn't. You wouldn't say he looks particularly wealthy. You know, he's got a set of clothes on his back. He's got mm. shoes, which nothing's gonna fit. That's you. nice. You know? yeah, yeah, none of it's gonna fit you. <laughs> well, gonna fit. I don't have to wear it to sell it. Well, maybe mm. he wants to dress Jerry. Yeah, maybe he wants to dress Jerry. <laughs> And so far, Jerry has been silent on this half look. Okay. He's kind of come in and is approaching yeah. you guys. I kind of envision Jerry f- a fairly innocuous and, and not a very prevalent force. But every now and again, is he'll Jerry pipe visible up. to others? No, he's in a little pouch that Jerry Like carries. hanging off his waist or around his <clears throat> neck? Or It'd probably be around his neck. Okay. Because that might be but the kind of thing Sometimes that, tied to his waist, okay. but it's, it's always very close. Little satchels like that are of particular interest to me. I like to keep them. So. All right. So, Vril, are you going to get these guys to... I am. Well, you know, guys, it's... Uh, you look new around here. <laughs> uh, you, you, you seem like uh, something's missing from the table here while you're, while you're waiting. I thought I'd come over and, and talk to you and catch up a little bit, if, making sure that you're the people that... Well, I was sent here to collect, to ask if I could invite you to another place across town. But we haven't eaten here yet. Oh, we don't have to go right now. Absolutely don't have to go right now. I would love to sit here and visit for a little longer, get to know you. For what purpose? Because I love new people. I love learning about you. No, why why would we go somewhere else? I mean... Oh, because there's there's fantastic libations at this at this other location. Really? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, what and the master of, of the auction house has invited, has asked me to invite you there. Us, you, uh, absolutely, of course. Us, I mean, yes. well, you look like exactly, you, you look uh, like you might need a little bit of sprucing up help in town. I thought I'd, you know, maybe help you out a little bit, guide you around. What's wrong with the way I look? Oh, nothing's wrong with the way that you look. You fit in perfectly. Is there? A... It, it's it's the look on your face of concern and perhaps a little. I'm lost. This is the only food? place that I know. I don't know if there's going to be food or not. You said libations. Libations. Drink. Beverages. Yeah. If libations are all you seek, then that will be enough. An auction house? We're not going to the auction house. No, we're going to go to a cafe. I was sent on an errand by Martin at the auction house. A cafe? Yeah. You don't know what do you think? We could stay if you're waiting for food. Yeah. Martha has wonderful cockles and mussels. It goes in the shells and cheese. It goes in the <laughs> shells and cheese. <laughs> uh, I think I might go. I'm gonna... Now? Mm, yeah, probably. Skip the food, go right to the cafe. Well, the cafe's Show gonna you have around. food too. And if it's paid for. Sure. Yeah. I'm gonna take a look a... in my little coin purse. A little pouch and see what's in there. Nothing in there but a Can rock with a face there? on it. <laughs> you got anything in there. Looking back at you. Yeah. No, that's a different place. Well, you guys clearly have really no other really better options. I mean, you can sit yeah. here and hang with Martha. Yeah, they may have forks have there. I mean, I'm going. <laughs> I'm not getting a fork here. You need a fork? Martha has no forks. 
Yeah. She serves everything with a spoon, man. Yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> Are you saying Martha spooning isn't enough? Correct. Okay, well. <laughs> That's exactly what I was saying. Well, if saying. you would like to come with me, I can show you the way. You guys going to do it? I'm doing it. I'm Again? off. I'm going to the cafe. Okay. Excellent. No food. I step on you. Uh-huh. I'll do my best. Title of this episode will be Promise of Forks. Promise. The promise. The, the promise, promise of Forks. Of forks. <laughs> I thought we had that here. Oh, no. No. <clears throat> All wooden Wrong spelling. Here, my friend. So I need to know, does Vril care <laughs> that Basher is Martin's brother and that Basher and... Not, not yet. That'll, that'll okay. come up. Yep, that'll come in. And you did notice that, the tie in there. Dunstan, that your uh, your friend Basher was like nowhere to be seen. Or Blitzen. There. You know, and he's usually there gambling. <laughs> or <laughs> Blitzen was not there either. <laughs> I would, I would think yeah. that there might be other things in in the brothel going on that we might not have seen Basher. Probably. So. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. There's just there's no no sign of Basher. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. All right. All right. Basher in and a brothel. <laughs> just there's Basher, something wrong about that. Basher yes. will turn up. Or right. I, I guess depends on your point right, of view. Yes, I suppose. Exactly. But I mean, from my perspective, I'm just subconsciously thinking about Basher because he may be a source of income given I'm broke. Mm-hmm. But you know, you and Basher did do you you pulled some pretty sweet. You know, you didn't say it wasn't quite outright stealing, but you and he. It had some pretty sweet adventures with, like, you know, <laughs> questionable circumstances around certain gambling games. Right. Uh, Perfect. May or may not have run out of a couple gambling houses barely with your lives. I don't know. No. Some of that stuff yeah. might have happened. Okay. Perhaps. <laughs> Perfect. I don't know. But, but you do have fond memories epic. of Basher. Okay. okay. Great. Uh, well, so you do. will start making your way up from the docks into... Uh, slightly north up to the Eastern District. Do we have a, uh, an image of the Eastern District that we could perhaps... We do. Yeah. Up a bit. Hang on. Let me go to the map. All right. There so. we go. So we're kind of moving up from the docks, and then we've got... Why don't you just drag us down just a little bit so we can see some of the docks there. There we go. Yeah. So you're making your way, yep, from kind of that pink area right in the middle. Right up okay. in here? Yep. Okay. So you start making your way up to uh, what you know is the Eastern District, and what you know about that is that it is also the great bastion of the middle class in Freeport. However, the middle class is not synonymous with comfort and stability. Only the wealthy can really be sure of their future. For most of the scrabbling East Enders, often called Easterners locally in Freeport, financial ruin is only one bad business deal away. So like real life. Just <laughs> like okay. real life. Yeah. A decade of hard work can be washed away in a matter of days. Disasters such as this are known as the Scurvy Town Express since newly <laughs> impoverished EastEnders quickly migrate to the cheap flop houses of Scurvy Town, or if they're lucky, Drax End, at the far north of the city. <laughs> oh. All right. That's rough. What you know about the East End is that EastEnders are always energized, always looking to make some quick cash or better their position. This ambition gives the district an exciting, dynamic feel. The streets here are full of hustle and bustle, wheel and deal. While many folks still live in multifamily tenements, they are generally nicer than those of Draxend and certainly <coughs> better than the festering crap holes of Scurvy Town. <laughs> <laughs> crap holes. <laughs> that is crap a hole. technical term, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> Scurvy Town Obviously. technical term. Easterners are more likely to have a row house of their own, and a lucky few even have small yards where they can keep a few chickens or maybe a goat or a cow for some milk. Hmm. Very nice. The district is home to many small specialty shops and businesses, as well as up-and-coming sea captains and merchants. <coughs> Craftsmen such as blacksmith, blacksmiths, carpenters, cobblers, and cord wainers. I don't know what a cord wainer is. Cord wainer. Yes. Well, they wain cords, obviously. They're, clearly, they're waning <laughs> cords. Yeah. Uh, they are obviously. Different than waxing cords. Yes, All made Eastern different. District their home, although those businesses having more olfactory impact, mm. are encouraged to keep their businesses in scurvy town. <laughs> so as right you... In. So Jinjin worked in scurvy town. <laughs> or found in scurvy town. <laughs> yeah, <it could> be. <laughs> oh, could he's be. not the only one. So as you're passing through, you're walking <clears throat> up north, there's a small, that kind of white thoroughfare. Right up in here? Right 
up in here if you can move. Yeah, move that mouse. Yep, there you go. You you come across this big, large, open square right in the middle that you know. Uh, who has the strongest knowledge local skill among all of you? Probably me. I believe you do. Probably me. Okay, you want to make me a... Uh, Knowledge locals then so this is kind of with some of the first game mechanics that we'll bump into and and what we're gonna do is roll a skill check so Jin Jin here has some um, He's trained in knowing a little bit about the local environs and it's some I of this know where we are Recognize this a little bit <laughs> okay. So being the urban ranger that he is but what do you got? Can you give us the you got a nine? I got a 9 plus 4, 13 total. So you got a 13 on that. Okay, so... Um, Great, but not Based there. on the outcome of the roll and your small bonus afforded to you by having that skill trained, you know the Field of Honor um, is the center of the Eastern District, both literally and figuratively. Okay. By day, it is a commercial hub, and by night, you've heard it's home to cloaked duelists with flashing blades. At all hours, though, it is the heart of the syndicate, the criminal organization that, that controls the Eastern District. So we haven't figured out your class all yet, right. but yep. uh, I think, Brill, if you could roll me a knowledge local check, and we're just going to base it on your intelligence. So do you get any <laughs> bonuses with your intelligence? Seven. You've got a bonuses seven. Bonuses with my intelligence. Intelligence is ten. Okay. Zero bonus. Okay, so you have no bonus, you rolled a seven on that. Well, you don't have to get too much because most people uh, are familiar at the at a very minimum with someone something called Finn Syndicate. Okay, mm -hmm. so Finn Syndicate is a what you know is kind of a, 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 a almost like the mafia here sure. in the Eastern District, and at the head of this kind of shadowy organization, you do know that there's a fellow halfling character named Finn. Mm -hmm. And Finn is someone that you know you don't want to tangle with. You know, as an aspiring vigilante, <coughs> you've, you've kind of, yeah, well. you've dipped a toe or two into some shady areas before. And, and as soon as Finn's names come up, people start to just kind of get, just kind of freak out. Sure. They're, they're pretty scared of this guy. But, uh, but that's about all you, that's about all you know. All right. So here you are in the Field of Honor, and we are, you are quickly <coughs> taking them to... You can see number seven on the map there. Okay. So we're going to the Freeport map. And just at about, if the if the Field of Honor is a clock, you're looking at about 10 o'clock. The little... Okay. It's hard for me to, like... There we go. It's all oh, you got load it. up here. Oh, there it is. So about 10 o'clock? Yep. So right, the little number. So go, yep, right there. You just had it down right here. Right. Yep, there you go. So, why don't you make me, Jinjin, Jin, why don't you make me another knowledge local check? Alright. Ooh, that's really good. 17, 17. plus 4, 21. 21! Boom! <coughs> right. He well, sees into the future! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know so much! <laughs> so, back at, uh, back at the, uh, back where you guys met, you, uh, you heard that name Cafe Ilkin, and it was just kind of... <coughs> Talked a bit of it. Now you're actually seeing the outside of this, uh, okay. this small cafe, and what you know about it is that it's a hotbed of political radicalism in the heart of the Eastern District. <laughs> Great! Yeah. Wow, man. So you know that uh, uh, foreign <clears throat> exiles, because uh, you are on Freeport, is on an island, mm -hmm. um, and exiles often find their way to Freeport from uh, various parts of the continent, and you know, oftentimes they have to take up home here in Freeport to, you know, to start a new life because for whatever reason they just can't go back to where they came from on the, uh, on the continent. And uh, you know this place in particularly is famous for groups of these exiles to make grandiose plans of reform and revolution while sipping endless cups of cave, an exotic drink from the south. So based on your pretty awesome knowledge local check, uh, you know, a little bit more color about it. And about 50 years ago, a young Azharan storyteller, and the Azharai are uh, they're a, a, a race that's indigenous to this part of, of the world, and they are, um, they're almost like, they're like genie people in a way. They have a tiny okay. little bit of, of genie blood in them. And um, 
There was a young Azari, he was a storyteller named Ilkin, and he arrived in Freeport with a bag of cave beans and a simple idea. He wanted to open up a cafe in Freeport like those in his homeland. He bought a failing tavern in the Eastern District and christened it Cafe Ilkin. He hoped that Freeporters would embrace his new venture. Cave was a rare commodity in Freeport, once and one he suspected would prove an attractive alternative to beer and ale. Success did not come his way quickly, though, and Freeport's middle class proved elusive customers, but slowly Ilkin built up a loyal clientele. And Cafe Ilkin was discovered by a group of continental exiles who adopted it as their meeting place. Other expats and immigrants followed gradually until eventually Cafe Ilkin was thriving. It became a place for heated political debates over steaming hot cups of black <coughs> cave. Interestingly, the political anger in the cafe was always directed outwards towards the various continental governors. Freeport had provided a safe haven for those revolutionaries and dissidents, and they showed little interest in reforming the city. The few regulars who flirted with Freeport's politics were looked down upon. And Ilkin, Ilkin died a decade, a decade ago, and his daughter, Arzu, who grew up here, has taken over. She pays her protection money to the syndicate, which you know of quite well, bro. And it pays for fresh water from the rainmakers pays to keep the cave coming from distant ports, and pays the hellhounds to kick out anyone who gets too rowdy. That's right. <laughs> she had to raise the prices of her cave after the salt curse fell, and we'll talk about the salt curse at a different time. Okay. But somehow people still pay, and so she still manages to make enough to keep the place afloat, but only barely. Hmm. All right. All right, I'm going to stop kind of short of where we're going and how close is he to me uh you're all you know walking together all right i'm just gonna put my hand on the top of his head <laughs> why are you taking us here i was asked to bring you here i uh, wouldn't take you anywhere by who by martin the auction housekeeper all right I've heard some stories about Martin and uh, I've and heard Bashar. stories, too. I, I, don't, I, I don't spend much time in other people's business. I, I've got other things to attend to, but Martin and Basher know each other, and that's a little request that Martin made of me. He's been good to me. I want to make sure that Martin stays happy with me. All right. Is we, Basher here? I don't know where Basher is, is at here? the moment. Uh, no one pointed out to me whether uh, Basher was going to be joining us here or not. Right. Martin really, really wanted me to bring you uh, over here. Maybe <coughs> he just wants you to try some cave. No, dangerous place. Keep yeah. eyes open. Right. We got we got the right people here, looking out for everyone. <laughs> it's There's no right people here. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. <laughs> All right. I'll keep going. You're gonna go in. <clears throat> yep. Going in. Okay. Boom. All right. Well, you head in to. Cafe Okin, and you know, just just like you expected, you know, there's a few little pockets of some kind of. They're not quite, you know, they're not quite nobles, but they're not. They're definitely not the scum that you just left in the docks. These are these are solidly middle class people, and they're sitting around and they're sipping hot, steaming cups of this cave beverage, and uh, kind of speaking quietly amongst themselves. Every every now and again, something gets kind of animated and, and a little excitable, um, but for the most part, it's a pretty you know, well-organized, well-run. Um, it's a comfortable place. Okay. And uh, over uh, over in the corner, you notice a man sitting by himself <laughs> who's dressed extremely well. He's, he's, he's definitely a cut above, um, you know, what you had just seen and just kind of has this air of, of um, I don't know, just accomplishment about him that, that, that seems to speak. Okay. He's kind of calm. Um, you notice him right away. You mm. recognize him as Martin. Mm. I'm going to bring, bring them everybody over? I may as well bring them right over right now. Okay, all right. So as you as you sit down, um, let's do a, let's see, do you have a, a what's your diploma? Who has the highest diplomacy skill? Yeah, <laughs> not me. Uh, let's see. Diplomacy? Uh, let's see. Well, I've got, you know, I guess with my charisma bonus, it would be... A 14? You're a 14? Okay, yeah. why, don't, why don't you go ahead and throw a diplomacy check here. <clears throat> a two! Not so good. <laughs> hey, I got any forks! <laughs> 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 
So he sits down, and, and you clearly notice that this guy is, like, super worried. Like, okay. he, is, he is worried, and he looks at you, and he goes, Are these the people? Seriously? Are these the effing people? <laughs> I'm totally confident these are exactly the people you asked me to bring for you. Oh, my God. It was unmistakable that this had to be the two Frill, that you listen, asked me to listen, bring. The way that I understood these guys, I, I mean, I thought these were professionals. These are the scrubbiest looking two people. Well, you I've didn't say seen. what kind of professional. I understand wow. that. You just, you, you wanted me to get them. I've done that. Oh, Absolutely. God. Like everything you've asked me to do. Here we go. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So this guy is clearly, he's, he's under some, <clears throat> he's under some anguish and he just kind okay. of mutters to himself. He says, <clears throat> well, all right. I mean, this is just kind of, please, uh, gentlemen, have a seat. Have a seat. Great. So he invites you to sit down. Where's my starving. starving. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. I'll sit. Listen, gentlemen, I, I, I'm sure that this whole thing is a little, um, you know, surprising that you've been brought here. And, and you know, I'm, I, I do apologize for not sharing a lot with you. But I just, um, I'm really worried about Basher. And, uh, and Dunstan, I, I, I know that you and Basher have known each other sure. through some kind of, you know, through some thick and thin circumstances. And I, I, I just, I, I really need some help. All right. Sure. What, okay. What's what's wrong with Basher? Well, listen. And who's this guy? And he points to Jinjin, and he's just <coughs> he's clearly Jinjin is the source of his well he's, discomfort. He's Jinjin. <laughs> uh, just ignore the smell. He's oh good people. God! Okay. He's good people. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's kind of a foul stench in here compared to what it's normally like. <laughs> so you you sit down and, he's, and you say. <laughs> Listen, I have, uh, I, I have, I, I really need to just paint a bit of a story here for you about about what you're doing here. Um, let me let me start at the beginning, okay? And he says, um, "Do you know who Jenkin Hammer is?" And Jinjin, why don't you do a knowledge local check? Actually, why don't you guys all do a knowledge local check? So knowledge local is going to be, uh, I believe, intelligence. intelligence. Yep. So you you all three can roll. You're probably not going to get a whole lot of bonuses on that. We don't. Yeah, you're a idiot. You got a 13 plus your plus I four. rolled a 12 plus one. So you're 13. 17. So you're a 17? Okay. Um, so you actually do. <laughs> you have heard of Jenkin Hammer, actually. Okay. And uh, What was the name again? Jenkin Hammer. Jenkins! Jenkin Hammer. Hammer! He's got <laughs> oh. Hammer in his name. Okay, let's write this down. All right. I know him. So, uh, what you know about Jenkin Hammer is that he was a teacher at something called the Freeport Institute, uh, like a hundred years ago. And the Freeport Institute is a, um, uh, it's like an, it's like an inst- it's like almost like a university. It's like an institute okay. of, of institution of higher learning, and it's famous for uh, teaching and training wizards, magicians, sorcerers, uh, specifically though uh, alchemists. Um, there's, it's very well known to have a lot of uh, uh, alchemists and working alch. <laughs> Are there working alchemists around? Is that a thing? I, it, it is a thing. It is a thing. It's, I, yeah. I think we call, them, we call them. We call them. I think pharmacists now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like the Globe College of Business in Freeport. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, right across from Orange Julius. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so. You know that Jenkin Hammer was a teacher at this at, at this Freeport Institute, um, and you've heard some legends. And uh, what you know about the legend of Jenkin Hammer is that his father was a lumberjack, and he was a lumberjack that worked uh, at Draxend, which is the north kind of edge of the city, which leads off into <coughs> the, the rest of the island. Freeport is at the southern far end of the tip, so okay. the north gate of Freeport empties out into this kind of rough and wild jungle. Um, it's just, it's, it's pretty dangerous out there. So as a lumberjack, he was working out there. But he's okay. He was killed. Oh, his he's not was okay. Killed. Very yeah. not okay. He's very, very That's not just okay. okay at all. Um, so <laughs> apparently so okay. what happened is that um, uh, his son, Jenkin, was <clears> brought <throat> to the institute, institute and taken in as an orphan. And um, it was there that he was like this prodigy, Okay. And he was extremely good, particularly with alchemy and like contraptions and, and devices. Mm-hmm. So, as an aside, in Freeport, things like flintlock pistols and that sort of thing are there. 
Um, mm -hmm. So this isn't there. There's there's some machinery that's that's okay. certainly present here. Cool. Um, and this particular institute is known for being a center of study and innovation and design for uh, mechanisms that that are powered by magic and can harness magic itself. And um, yeah, so Jenkin Hammer was just became this prodigy. And it was there that he earned this nickname, the Iron Jack. So his father was the Lumberjack, and he became well known as the Iron Jack. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and as an adult, he then continued <clears throat> to work at the Institute as a professor, and he taught magic theories and eventually developed uh, the Weather Towers, which you know are uh, magical devices in the, in the town that are designed to help keep the super chaotic and really harsh weather that, that hits the southern end of the island with, with ferocity. So it was Jenkin Hammer that actually developed these magical mechanical devices that helped actually literally control the weather. Okay. Okay. So he's wow. this is we're talking this is the the top of the top. He's yeah. like he's like the Steve Jobs of Freeport yeah. here, okay? <laughs> nice. Um okay. But something happened. So uh, <clears throat> after the towers were completed, he disappeared for like 10 years. Like the guy just up and left at the height of his fame and uh, and abilities and no absolutely nobody knows where he went. He just disappeared. Uh, hmm. but he did return. So um, you know, and you were, in the, as the legend goes, that he came back and just lit up by this like fervor and determination. Um, and, and he was, you know, he was quite skilled before, but he came back literally almost with the fear of God in mm -hmm. him as he was uh, working on what nobody really knows. But for those that knew him, um, it's pretty well documented in, in journals and, and just has become kind of urban legend that he was, he was just came back like just lit up. Um, but nobody knows what he was working on, <clears throat> and uh, fortunately, his standing at the at the institute, um, you know, was so high that nobody really bothered to to question him or ask him about you know about what he was doing. And then suddenly, three years into this mysterious return, he just completely disappeared again. He just left without a trace. In fact, um, he he left with like stuff like mid project i mean he was working on just these amazing devices mm -hmm. and he just left all of his work um untouched and it's kind of been this weird like parlor mystery ever since almost just like okay. you know it's almost like jimmy hoffa here is like where you know it's just it's kind of <laughs> urban <laughs> legend yeah like nobody nobody really knows <clears throat> where's iron jack yep and it's it's almost become this like game throughout freeport oh. to like speculate on what happened to Iron Jack. And in fact, there's a saying that goes around, it's a colloquialism, it says like, well, I'm gonna make like an Iron Jack, and just you know, just like just up and okay. disappear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. So, um, like so anyway, that that's what you know about okay. Martin Jenkins, and where are you gonna share that with, with the group? I hope you are, because they all know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'll just, you mean Iron Jack Jink? Jenkins? Yeah, you know, you know the Iron Jack. Yeah, he created Good. the weather tower. Yeah, that's right, that's right. God, oh, wow. Really? Uh, the, 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 the I remember I got back into the outfit. I gotta stop judging a book by its cover. But yeah, you're, <laughs> you're right. He instantly, you see him think. just instantly relax and feel a lot more comfortable around you. Like you, you really freaked him out. So. <laughs> well, that's good, I guess. Yeah. We'll throw that under some of those fun facts that yeah. Jin Jin comes up and surprises people with. Mm -hmm. The brilliant island troll. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Dunstan knowledge. is just sitting there open mouthed. Like, <laughs> really? I didn't know so, that crap. Iron Jack. Yeah, I'll go into basically an <laughs> overview, kind of the same. Okay, so awesome. you share with them and, and great. Teacher at the Mages. Uh, by the way, they're also very good alchemists and designers of mechanisms. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> they kind of go off on this, <laughs> this tangent. I didn't know we had weather towers here. Do you have weather Me towers? Neither. Yes. You, Dang. Yeah. All You'd this know time if I we didn't. It. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> All this time you're focusing on cutting forks. And I don't notice much. Tower. I don't notice much, to be honest. Huh? Would you look at that? <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> There's a it's monkey hard. up there. From down where I am, it's hard to look past Jinjin, let alone to see the weather towers. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so you all established that you're on the same page, and and, he, and mm -hmm. clearly, um, you know, Martin is very is is glad that you've heard about this guy. Um, 
And he continues on and he says, look, um, I, uh, you know, I got my start. I actually, I owe him, I owe this Iron Jack. I, I owe uh, Jenkin Hammer really my entire livelihood because um, without him I would be nothing. And what I mean by that is, is I used to work at the, um, the, muni the municipal auction house. And, uh, you know, while I was working there, I discovered some ancient papers that were part of this estate sale. And um, as I, you know, kind of started going through them, I realized that there were the journal entries of, like, a, a foreman on a construction crew. <laughs> and he was renovating this, this old house just not far from here in the Eastern District. Uh, and it was like this, you know, just log of daily supplies and, and um, you know, the comings and goings of the crew and, and uh, you know, the wage, the, the books for the, the wage paying and stuff like that. And um, it seemed that this journal and the author of this journal was tasked with sealing off of like this weird like basement workshop that was abandoned by sealing it an off alchemist. Okay. Yeah, just to seal the thing. <coughs> off. Um, okay. There were apparently there were a whole bunch of these really weird and like bizarre contraptions. Um, you know, some of them looked like they might be able to hurt people. Um, it was just really like it was really frightening, according to the. The, the author of this journal and um, the owner of this building wanted this workshop just sealed off. Like he didn't want anything to do with it. He literally just wanted it, it sealed off from the rest of the world. So there was something in me, some intuition, and I, I sensed an opportunity. And uh, I went to go see uh, Falfar. And why don't you do another knowledge local check on this guy, Falfar? Not as much. Nine. <clears throat> uh, Wow. 18. Nice. 18. <coughs> wow. Why um, Falfar? So, Dustin, <laughs> you kind of perk up and you go, Falfar? Hmm. What you know about Falfar is that he was actually one of the most learned men in Freeport. Okay. Um, he hasn't been around much anymore, though. And uh, it's you, you do know that it's said, it's rumored, that this guy has literally has the blood of angels flowing through his veins. Mm. And uh, Falthar had a, a store in the Merchant District called Falthar's Curios, and it was known as kind of being the place to pick up magical goods and uh, perhaps actually hire him out to either identify or help do some research into mysterious items that had some kind of like arcane, um, arcane power. So it was almost like a you know, <coughs> magical Walmart that he was. <laughs> right. right. I mean, it was one of those places you always wanted to rob, but didn't dare. You didn't right. dare. Right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I know so, it. I know it. During <laughs> and uh, during what you know is of this phase called the barbarian, the barbarian invasion that swept through Freeport years ago, um, his shop was ransacked and he completely disappeared. 